Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're here live at the World Trade Center in Seattle. I'm here with Jim Macoso, founder of Lucid Oils. Jim is a cannabis extraction processing professional in the cannabis industry. In J- January 2015, he co-founded Lucid Lab Group, a cannabis extraction technology company based in Seattle. Jim's vision was to create a scientific approach to cannabis essential oil processing by utilizing customized capital equipment in combination with proven scientific processes by taking a quality-centric approach. Jim has created a company culture known throughout the industry for quality and product and process. Prior to co-founding Lucid, Jim engaged Looper Technologies as an angel investor in January of 2014. He joined the business management team where he held the position of vice president responsible for strategic partnerships and business development until October of 2015. He remained on the board of directors until December of 2016. And by spearheading a business model focused on product development while maintaining a customer first approach, Vuber has become a leading vaporizer company with strong partnerships that include manufacturers, cultivators, processors, and retailers throughout the U.S. Prior to his involvement in the cannabis industry, Jim was a finance professional in New York for six years. He holds an economics degree from Stony Brook University with a focus in business finance. Jim, thanks for being on board. Thanks for having me. So let's look at some market dynamics. There's a lot of development taking place in order to suffice the customer needs. A global medicinal plant extract market is growing to rising demands for herbal medicines and homeopathic products because of a change in consumer behavior. So how do you spot innovative products? Um, So thinking of like who's the greatest advancement in the cannabis industry, maybe that's you. Uh, What are they doing? So how do you spot innovative products? Uh, Well, the only way to spot innovative products is to go to the market and see uh, who's doing what? I mean, as a product manufacturer, uh, we're innovative for sure. But I would say there are some companies that are exceptional at innovation. Um, you know, putting out not only good products, but always trying to do something new. One of those companies, uh, you know, I'll just mention and plug them because I think they do great work is a company called Binsk. Um, B-I-N-S-K-E. A lot of people pronounce it Binsky, but it's called Binsk. And it's uh, run by these two brothers, uh, originally from, uh, from South Florida. Um, and, and they created this brand. It's an edible and concentrate brand, a lifestyle brand. And they're always coming out with like new, awesome, innovative products. You know, when I first encountered their brand a couple of years ago, it was they had olive oil and these kind of like fruit leathers, which was like an all natural fruit infused uh, product. Think of like a, uh, you know, think of like an all natural fruit roll up, if you will. Excellent products. Um, you know, the olive oil, high quality, they were using high quality olive oil from Italy and infusing it. So it was just like olive oil that you would think was, you know, and I think there are other people who are doing that good work like that, but they were one of the few companies where they had that model across a number of products, including some excellent chocolate. But they're always kind of innovating and coming out with kind of new stuff. You know, most recently they, they released the sauce pen. They were one of the first companies to come out with the sauce pen or a pen using hydrocarbon sauce product, a vape pen infused with distillate, I believe they use. Um, and, and fantastic product, number one seller in Nevada. You know, really, really good product. Um, but when it comes to product creation, I think the only way to really know what's new and innovative is to be plugged in or if you are uh, in a state where there's mer- uh, medical or recreational cannabis, ask the bud tenders. They see more product than you could imagine. And it's because it's their job to sell you products. So, you know, a really knowledgeable bud tender will definitely have a beat on innovation uh, and, and what's, who's doing what. Um, you know, outside of that, listening to podcasts like this one and, and being plugged into the industry from an information standpoint, you know, there's a number of publications that release daily uh, newsletters. Um, there are magazines that come out that are always, you know, trying to show off what's the next and best, you know, some that are more focused on technology, some that are more focused on product uh, or specific compounds like, you know, terpene and testing magazine, for instance, they're always talking about the latest innovations in technology. Um, you know, there are a number of ways to be plugged in. Um, me as a product manufacturer, uh, we are always looking at what's out there. But our focus is really more motivated internally. We just try to create awesome products. Uh, And yeah, okay, of of course, we're we're definitely motivated by people who other people are creating awesome products. But, you know, we're we're a small company. So we don't try to measure with measure up against, you know, what these really huge companies are doing, because a lot of times they're doing that to make money, because they have to hit a bottom line. For us, 
anytime we're driven by innovation, uh, like for instance, in this terpene um, machine that we're building with Tandem Technology, that is primarily based in our ability and our desire to make something new. I like to build things. I like to always be creating something else. Otherwise I get bored. So, you know, a lot of our innovation comes from just wanting to do something new and different. Yeah, I'm really excited about the fact that you're using cannabis terpenes and reintroducing can cannabis terpenes uh, rather than getting like a banana terpene or whatever. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, wondering about other developments that you're seeing um, or other trends. So we're seeing like highly water soluble compounds along with better shelf life or other factors that are widening the application of the products and cosmetics and research and other industries. So um, anything else that you could think of like other developments that you're seeing in extraction technology or other trends that you're seeing that's influencing these developments? Um, I would just say, you know, in general, What's influencing development in general is the fact that cannabis as a class is becoming mainstream because of Western countries and, and maybe, uh, you know, other countries in Central and South America that have made it made a stance, you know, in the case of Colombia, Mexico, obviously the U.S. states and Canada as a country by putting their stamp on it and saying, hey, we're going to allow people to operate companies that are focused on getting what's in that plant out of it. Naturally, that's going to spur on innovation and, and investment in these spaces. So I would, I would not say that there's a trend that we are focused on. What I would say the big trends we're seeing is, uh, especially from a global standpoint, is hemp, you know, always been very popular in Europe. Uh, and China to a lesser extent, you know, they use hemp fibers in car parts and many different car parts in major manufacturers. And they've been doing that for a long time now, you know, decade. Um, now that the U S and Canada are involved as big Western capital powerhouses, um, you're just seeing innovation in general. And so you're, we're, you know, us as a product manufacturer and as a equipment manufacturer, um, you know, through partnerships, you know, we are seeing development both in the equipment side and development on the product side. And I wouldn't say that there's a, a trend more or less. What I would say is that hemp has hemp globally and the acceptance of hemp here in the U.S. and Canada has led us as a, um, you know, as a species, the human race to to really now see this as a product that is viable that our ancestors used. And because we live in the 21st century where technology is growing and expanding at such a rapid rate, people are always trying to innovate in something that is always, uh, that not only is capital, uh, that, that can show tremendous amount of capital return, but also that the people are interested in. So cannabis as a industry, um, you know, unlike maybe many other industries at this particular time in history is at a crossroads where culturally, it's being talked about around the world, thanks to hemp and, and THC, obviously, to a lesser extent, but hemp in general is definitely driving that conversation globally. Um, we're in a technological age where technology is expanding at the, the fastest rate it ever has. Um, and, and, and from a capital standpoint, as it turns out, people love weed. People love hemp. People love weed. And uh, that's driving companies that are interested in innovation like us and companies that just want to make a dollar to get involved. So when you have that intersection of all of these interests, culturally, financially, um, you're going to get innovation. So from a trend standpoint, I mean, yeah, we're seeing trends of people popping up with these hemp, uh, these hemp grows and these hemp facilities, but um, some of the technology that's in there is still very much in development. People are trying to isolate compounds, which compounds they don't know. But the technology to isolate compounds is definitely a sub-trend we're seeing on the technology development side. Uh, on the product development side, what are the trends I think we've seen and we will continue to see is vape pens are becoming a huge thing globally. You know, uh, you know, in Europe, we were watching just the idea of vaporizing. Uh, Marlboro produces this product now where they have a vaporizer, but you still put it, and this is hugely popular in all Europe, especially in what we'll call Eastern Europe, but out there is really just the Balkan Central Europe in Croatia and uh, the Czech Republic and Serbia, uh, even in Bosnia, I was seeing this was a couple of weeks ago, I was there just chilling with my brother. And, you know, I always notice technology, especially vape technology, but Marlboro developed this like vaporizer where you essentially put in 
like a, t- a tobacco, a natural tobacco laden tube into a vaporizer to vape it. And everybody smokes, or let's just say a lot of people smoke in Europe, much more than the US, still a thing out there. Um, but just to see that vape technology is starting to take hold on the tobacco side there. But vapes as a, as a product class is going to continue to be what I think one of the most disruptive technologies and certainly drive a lot of growth um, in both the hemp and, and, and the marijuana space. Yeah, we saw Altria put in, I think, $2 billion up in Canada to develop their, their vape technology. So it's, it's definitely big. Um, I think data is the second largest investment vehicle. And within that is technology. The number one tech is accurate dosing and, and vaping. So definitely big. We've seen maybe some of that misinformation or at least the fear factor in Canada being that uh, October 17th was going to be the release date for Infuse. That's kind of round two. Uh, last October, what, almost nine months ago now, um, they released flour and some other products. Canada was going to release the second wave being edibles and, and uh, concentrates on October 17th. And that was delayed for a couple of months through to uh, December, mid-December, uh, just for, for whatever reason. Um, but when I was down at the Indo Expo in Portland recently, I saw a pretty cool little product and it was for extracting terpenes specifically. And they had a yield, uh, they were claiming to have a yield uh, of 50%. So I'm kind of wondering what I've heard in the industry is if you can expect to get about 12 and a half percent yield and that uh, terpenes that he was getting 50%. Now, when I Googled the company, I saw your mug. <laughs> I saw your face on there. So that was pretty funny. Uh, this was one of the coolest things I saw at the Indo Expo. And then lo and behold, uh, Jim's mug is like all over it. So can you tell me what that terpene machine uh, is all about? Maybe explain uh, that terpenes are kind of like the steering wheel in a car. The, the THC percentage is the gas to get you there, but the terpenes are the direction or effect. You talk about indica-like effects or sativa-like effects. Those are really the, the terpenes driving that, that effect. Um, and then I kind of like to know a little bit more about that machine because, again, that was one of the coolest things I saw there. Yeah. Um, so the name of that, the company that uh, we're partnered with to manufacture that uh, particular instrument is called Tandem Technologies. And uh, that company is a company that's had a lot of success in multiple industries, um, but their manufacturing prowess comes from uh, developing um, uh, vessels and specific pieces of equipment for the semiconductor industry, mm-hmm. working with subsidiaries of really, really large semiconductor companies. And, you know, you name the big ones and they've worked with subsidiaries of those companies. So um, that particular piece of technology uh, was spawned out of a, um, a much more rudimentary system that we built um, in our uh, laboratory, our processing laboratory in Nevada, our production laboratory in Nevada. Um, and basically the, the whole idea for us is, uh, unlike a lot of other people that are extracting cannabinoid or uh, terpenes, excuse me, as just a part of their cannabinoid extraction process. Um, you know, we had a really, really sharp uh, technician is working with us a couple of years ago, kind of bring in this technology and basically um, show us a way that we could extract terpenes without using any solvents and before we extract the cannabinoids, such that we were able to get a sample of terpenes that were devoid of any cannabinoids and that uh, was most representative of what we could see in the plant. Um, and so that process is, um, you know, we, we're calling it sweep gas distillation, but, but we built a very rudimentary system of that. Uh, um, you've been using it in production in Nevada to isolate terpenes for a couple of years now. Um, then we worked with a company in Florida to do a much larger scale version of that um, and to do some development work to see how it would work at larger scale. And we had some success and, and certainly, uh, then we started, we partnered with this company, Tandem Technology, to produce a commercial version of that technology uh, for the market. Um, but when you say 50% terpene recovery, um, what, what, and I think there is a misnomer there, is 50% of what's available is what we expect to recover minimally. So in the case of, let's say, if you extract a, pl- uh, you know, you, you pull a plant out, you dry it, and once you've dried it, before you've gone through the curing process, there's 10% terpenes there. Probably won't be, it'll probably be closer to like three or four or two, but let's say it had 10% terpenes. What we're saying is this instrument can get at least 50% of what's there, and that's conservative. I, you know, in our trial runs, we've done much better than that. Um, you know, but what I will say is technology for extracting terpenes 
at the moment is rudimentary at best. Most people extract it along with their cannabinoids and then reintroduce a terpene cannabinoid mix into their products. Our goal uh, a couple of years ago when we first started doing this was to just isolate terpenes and get terpenes for their uh, profiles uh, that were unique from plants that we thought were amazing. And, uh, you know, we, you know, we worked with a couple of different companies to get really high quality product to try it out and to see how it would affect our uh, final product, which in Nevada is uh, distilled uh, distillate cartridges and uh, concentrate applicators. And so we applied these naturally derived cannabis derived terpenes uh, that we extract out of the plant. We reintroduce those into our products, into our extract products to produce like a wholly cannabis product with no outside uh, additives, no other terpenes, just cannabis derived terpenes. So, you know, that's something that we've been doing down there for, uh, you know, for a little while. And um, we think that the terpene extraction process is rudimentary at best in this country, uh, in, in the cannabis industry. I think that there's going to be a bigger push to get better and better at extracting terpene profiles and for a number of reasons. But as you mentioned, um, you know, depending on the profile of a cannabis plant will determine the, the efficacy. If you just take a, uh, you know, if you just try some THCA, concentrated THCA or concentrated CBD, you may get some effect, but it's never going to be as dynamic as the effect you get from a mix of cannabinoids and a mix of terpenes, which, you know, mo what you'll hear called the entourage effect. And so what we're finding is it's a combination, kind of that holistic approach we were first talking about. It's a combination of these compounds together that are leading to efficacy, uh, where, you know, uh, for instance, a terpene like limonene, which you'll find in lemons and other citrus fruits, but also happens to be in cannabis, since all terpenes are throughout the plant kingdom are the same. Limonene in one plant is the same as limonene in another plant. But limonene is known to be more alert, um, and it will help to uh, give you kind of more of that uplifting feeling, cerebral feeling. Um, whereas, uh, you know, something like myrcene, which you find in mangoes, will give you kind of, it's more sedative in nature. And so when, you're, when we see these terpene profiles, we're seeing, you know, numbers of ter hundreds of terpenes in these plants. And maybe you concentrate it down to 30 or 40 that you'll detect at the lab. But there are really small amounts of terpenes in there and flavonoids that we don't know of yet that have definitely uh, affect and modulate the effect of what you get when you're consuming cannabis. And I think as we look more deeply into how these compounds all uh, interplay uh, to give us an entourage effect, we'll find that the terpenes have just as much value as cannabinoids and, and definitely uh, can modulate the effects that you get from person to person. So with that, we're gonna roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is The Talking Hedge. I wanna thank my guest, Jim Acoso with Lucid Oils. Check him out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out.